All right. Well, today we are going to talk about uh, ETL versus ELT. And uh, this session, it probably won't take the entire hour for us to cover this, so we'll leave some time at the end for questions for you guys. Um, this is not going to be a, a demo-heavy session. It's going to be more theory and just talking about uh, how you should uh, choose your uh, your loading here. Uh, at the end, also, we've got a little treat for you. We're going to talk about the Microsoft PDW appliance, which is their parallel data warehouse, and talk about how that plays into ETL versus ELT also. So if you guys have not seen that or heard about that, it's a little treat at the end we'll talk about. All right, so uh, first, the boring stuff about me. So my name is Mike Davis. I'm a managing project lead. I'm author on five different SQL books. Uh, in fact, the newest one is coming out uh, next month. It's uh, SQL Server. Actually, no, I'm sorry, not next month. It's uh, actually on pre-release right now, uh, pre-order from Amazon. It's SQL Server 2014 uh, integration services. Uh, and I'm also certified in business intelligence too. So that's about me. Uh, I've been working with SQL Server for many years now and I've been uh, helping uh, customers and clients here at Pragmatic Works design uh, BI solutions and architect those. And uh, one of the questions I get quite a bit is, you know, well, should we do ETL or should we do ELT? Uh, and some people don't even know what the difference is. You know, what's the big difference between, you know, ELT and and ETL, and uh, we're going to talk about those differences today. We're going to talk about uh, what's involved in setting those up, and the pros and cons of each, uh, some situations of when you would use one versus when you would use the other, and uh, then I've got some examples. Uh, I've got some example packages. Again, this is not really a, a demo-heavy uh, session today, so I'm not going to be uh, really building packages and showing big examples. I'm just going to show a few example packages and show you how uh, one would work well in EOT and others would work well in ETL and why those would work uh, in those situations. All right, so oh, what is the big difference? So uh, first, the terminology, uh, ETL is extract, transform, and load. ELT is extract, load, and transform. Uh, so really in, in this uh, scenario, the extract, it doesn't change at all. Basically, you're still pulling data from, from one location. Uh, it's your source location. Uh, that source can be anything from uh, flat files, it come from Oracle, DB2, Sybase, Excel sheets, uh, you know, uh, user inner data, application data, uh, machine data, it doesn't matter. It could be any type of data. Uh, your source pr pretty much doesn't change. You're, we're going to still pull that source in the same way. Uh, but uh, the big question is, uh, once we get that data now, we're, we're pulling it in, should we go ahead and write it over to our target system and then do our transforms there on the target system, or should we do those transforms before they get to the target system? Uh, that's really the question. Should we do the transforms before or after we load it into the target system? And that's the big difference between ETL and ELT. And we'll talk about the pros and cons of those. So one of the major differences is uh, when you're doing ETL, most of the time your transforms are done by some sort of tool. Uh, in this example, we're going to talk about SSIS because uh, Microsoft is a uh, partner here with Pragmatic Works, and uh, it's a, SSIS is one of the popular tools uh, used to transform data. There are other ones out there like Informatica and uh, Oracle has some also, but uh, we'll use SSIS in our examples. But it, it really doesn't matter which tool you're using. Uh, a lot of these do the same type of work in the same way, uh, and most of the time when you're using a tool like this. Uh, the, the transforms are done in memory. Now, not always. There is some staging and some temp tables and things that are done in other systems. Uh, with SSIS, almost all of it's done in memory. So uh, it can be quite memory intensive when using uh, ETL, uh, but it also is very fast in terms of transforming data because typically when you have data in memory, uh, it's easier to transform and, and manipulate that data versus having it written to disk and then having to rewrite it and write it back to disk. With ELT, uh, your transforms are done on the target server. Uh, so you do actually, you actually put an actual load on that target server when you do transforms on that server. Now that can be a good thing or a bad thing based on uh, what your target server can handle and what kind of transforms you're doing. Also based on how much memory it is and how much data you need to change at one time. Uh, there are situations where uh, doing transforms in memory uh, is a bad thing because uh, you don't have enough memory to handle those transforms. Uh, but a lot of times it's, it actually is a good thing, depending on the, the volume of data and the transforms. And we're going to talk more detail about that here uh, in a few minutes. So of course, uh, whenever you talk about moving data around, you have to have a diagram that has arrows on it. Uh, so I created one so you guys can see that. So basically just uh, uh, letting you see the, the difference here. Uh, again, the, tr the really big difference here is the transforms are done in memory here uh, if I'm using SSIS, and the work is done on the server 
uh, and the other one. So that's really a big difference here is, is when and where the actual work is being done on the data. Uh, and this can be any kind of uh, data uh, manipulations here, grouping, sorting, concatenating data, adding in new fields, removing fields, trimming fields, uh, just about any transform you can think of uh, can be done in both locations. So the big question again is where should you do it at? And uh, as a consultant, uh, I'm required to say it depends at least three times a day. Uh, so it depends. And what does it depend on? Well, let's talk about that. Uh, so uh, here's some pros and cons of ETL versus ELT, and some of these will kind of point you in the right direction here and help you make the decision on where you should do your transforms at. Uh, so uh, the pros of ETL, uh, usually you've got some sort of well-established tool, something in the industry that's been used for a while, for example, SSIS. Uh, again, there's other ones out there like Informatica that can do the same type of work, but usually there's an established ETL tool uh, that's going to do the work for you and do your transforms. They have tools built into that uh, tool set uh, that are made to do those uh, types of transformations. Uh, sometimes there's complex tools built in like regex, uh, even fuzzy lookup, fuzzy merging, things like that uh, that you can do inside of SSIS and other tools uh, that really is, is hard to do uh, on a uh, uh, database management system. If you've loaded up the data into a uh, system and you try to uh, write T-SQL to accomplish some of these tasks, uh, there's just not any kind of tool built in to do you know, regex or uh, or fuzzy grouping, things like that. Not, at least not as easy as it is in uh, terms of doing it inside of SSIS. Uh, 